Welcome to the vlog. Today is the last day of cow vetting before my Christmas break. I'll be off for uh, eight days. So it is Sunday on call and Diana is at a, I guess, painting thing, like a ladies day painting thing. So I have the kidlets with me, Emerson, Neve, and we're heading out on the road to, oh, and Phineas. We are heading out on the road to uh, do some post-mortem. That's all that's been called in for the day. So right now we have two separate stops. One I think has eight post-mortems and one has one post-mortem. So we'll see why the cow like died. Pink pink. He, he his fart. What's that? I got pink his fart. Did he just fart? Yeah, because, because he's a pumpkin. sore tooth and he has lots of farts. I guess he's getting kind of old, isn't he? Yeah, I know. So yesterday I was on call. Emerson was very sick. He threw up, I think, like 10 times, both in the night and throughout the day. And the day before that, and the day before that, I was off on a work trip. So, yeah, spending some family time with the kids. You ready for some cow vet work? I'm just taking a little nap. Okay, you have a little nap. It's your favorite. Pretty soon you'll be changing the station With all your old shoes They're looking brand new They want to be warm But they never get to Pneumonia. See inflammation of the bronchioles. A little bit separative. That's pus coming out there. So separative bronchopneumonia. Heart's good. Beautiful. But now the brush you away from me. Edema in the spiral colon, spectacular. So this is nearly pathognomonic for nervous coccidiosis. Split it up here. Yeah, you can see he's got thickening of his cecum. Quite hyperemic. Uh, there's blood in there as well. So when I go back to look at history, look in the large colon here. A little bit hyperemic there. When you look back at history of this guy, he may be a neurological case, and because of this edema in the spiral colon, see, he very well could be a nervous coccidiosis. He did have a bad bronchopneumonia, but that may not be what killed him. Take out the distal ileum. Joint is clear. One, done. Never danced like this before We don't talk about it Dancing on Do the boogie all night long Stomped in paradise Should I talk about it? Talk about oh, this fibrin is not normal Look at that So here's the lung underneath So this lung, while compressed because of all this fluid is actually normal, it's not a pneumonia this is a fibrinous pleuritis. Usually the agent responsible is Histophilus somni. Good heart. I'll be right back, okay? Keep Stevie entertained. She was crying? Yeah. Okay, you're a good big brother. Okay. 
Normal lung, abnormal lung. Ooh, he's actually got some mycoplasma starting. Little micro abscessations all throughout there. The mycoplasma pneumonia. Not a fibrinous pneumonia, different etiology. So mycoplasma is obviously caused by mycoplasma. Fibrinous pneumonia, patchula maltosida, or Mannheimia hemolytica. Interstitial congestion. Not a pneumonia. So here's his papillary. There's his myocardial infarct right there. Stop with somni caused that. May have another one here. Smaller little infarct there. It's caused death. Myocarditis by Histophila somni. Clots, clots, clot, 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 clots, fibrin on the pleural surface. The lungs are also infected as well. So that is a late fibrinous pneumonia. Almost becoming chronic. I feel because of the absence of you. Ooh. Lots of yellow joint fluid. It's not super cloudy, but very yellow. This could have high bilirubin. His body was going into multiple organ failure. Okay, go check on the kids again. You okay? I'm almost done. See that fibrin in there? He's got a hip arthritis. So I would guess he has some mycoplasma pneumonia in his lungs. Suspense control in my mind. So that I never feel alone. Septic arthritis of the stifle joint. All that fiber and all that nastiness. So he would have been quite lame. Petechia and ecchymosis. So petechia are the little pinpoints and ecchymo ecchymosis is like a paintbrush lesion. Maybe a bit of pericarditis on the outside, but on the inside, myocarditis. There and there and there and there. Let's pick 
spectacular. There was even septic thrombi that were being showered everywhere as well. So it likely started as a Histophilus somni and as that became chronic turned into T. pyogens and other bacteria. And that's what was shedding. Maybe some Fusobacteria necroforum as well. But I'm strong about it. You guys getting bored of the repetition yet? It's like a little mystery every time. It's got some gas pockets in his lung, so that's emphysema. Lots of gas. Lots of gas. He's got this interstitial pattern here. That's a bronchopneumonia. So just based off of this, without looking any further, this is a bronchointerstitial pneumonia because it's got bronchopneumonia, but also an interstitial pattern. Could be viral in origin. Could be mixed viral and bacteria. Normal heart. So bronchointerstitial isn't entirely common, but in bowls that have been banded, the stress of banding decreases the immune system because of that stress, that cortisol release. So you can see some weird things that normal healthy cattle would be able to sort out on their own. Why do we band? Why do we castrate at all? Well. This is the feedlot trying to deal with animals that were not properly uh, managed in the cow-calf side. Guys not castrating at an appropriate age. They come into the feedlot and they have to do something with them. You can't just euthanize all the bulls. And feeding out bulls presents its challenges as well. So they're quite a bit more aggressive. So their carcass characteristics aren't desirable by the packing house, so you can get pretty severe discounts. Lots of edema, so these lungs aren't infected, but there's a ton of edema, pleural edema. So my best guess is he will be a myocarditis. His heart was starting to shut down and he was having a backup of blood, causing that pulmonary edema. Heart, myocarditis. Myocarditis. And septicemia. Fibrin in the joints. All right, everyone, how was that? Achoo! Achoo? Dog Achoo! Dog. So it was 10 deaths, uh, it took me 50 minutes to do 10, so I was doing 5 minutes per dead. Was Neve crying? Yes. Neve cried a little bit? Yeah. Should I feel bad or is it okay? Uh, it's okay, you will. Maybe she can have a nap. Yeah, that was a good idea, guys. I agree. I'm just gonna make Stevie a bottle. Okay, hurry. Because that that cow's gonna scream more at me. Okay? Okay. Oh, you're looking at me. Oh, you're looking at me. Oh. 
You want that? I didn't know you can make Legos. Yeah. It's boob milk because mommy pumped. Okay, I think that's enough for her. So right now we're looking for a ring pop store, right? The first ring pop store we see. There's not hardly any ring pop stores around. We're in the middle of nowhere. I don't know, that's why we're here, so we can find out. Uh. Uh. What's that thing right there? Uh, that's an old room, and, and the circular thing is an O Mason. But, but where does it come from? It's the cow's stomach. Hmm. And, and where did that come from? It came out of the cow's stomach. Then, then where do those pills come from? Farmers bailed them up. But, but where do the trees come from? They grew from little seeds. But where did the truck roll from? Uh, it was made in probably like Mississauga or Detroit or something. I look in here. Stay out of my gas hole. <laughs> Separated bronchial pneumonia with mycoplasma. See the pus? Unlock it. Unlock the door. Can, can I sit in your seat just in case and can we come back? Yeah, no problem. So, that's the day, and now that's the day. Okay? See ya! And I want to listen to you. <laughs> And we listen to your <gasps> Oops. Breakfast time, cow. That's disgusting. Stop it. Oh, why would you do that? Because it's so funny. Good. Okay, everybody. Good to go? No, we can't go home yet. We have to go to the Wayne Pop store. Okay, we'll go to the Wayne Pop store. So we didn't have any slushes at the store. Was there slushes? Yes. No, there was, there was no slushes. So what did we get instead? Popsicle! Popsicle! <laughs> <laughs> Okay?